Okay, now our next session, we're going to talk about the alpha role and the alpha role play between the dog and the dog handler. I want all my dogs to understand that I'm their boss and I'm their buddy. Every single day a dog will test you to see if you are the pack leader or if they are the pack leader. You can never really train a dog if they think they're your leader. So you want to be the dog's leader each day. So right now we have Manny in a nice calm sitting position. One of the first alpha role model playing situations we do is we pick the dog off their feet, which at Manny's size is getting a lot more difficult than when she was little. We're going to do that first. Again, we go into a wrestling hold like this, pick the dog off the ground. When they're 100% off the ground, psychologically, good girl, good girl, good girl, psychologically, that has an impact that they realize that you're their leader. They can't pick me off the ground, and then I flex their head with my hand. The reason I do this is so that the dog responds to my pressure. When I push the dog to the left, they go left. When I push the dog to the right, they go right. I do this every day. Notice she's not fighting me at this point. She just loves me now because I've been nice to her. But if she fights, I'll really fight hard and I'll squeeze the wind out of their lungs with my other hand. Sometimes I'll also put them in a light chokehold. But I do this so that the dog learns to give in to my pressure, left to right. That's an early sign of hand signals. And she's happy, she's playing, but I hold her still. And again, she's pretty heavy, so I'm going to set her down. Good girl, sit. Do you notice after you have the dog off the ground like that, that's a really good symbol uh, for her to relax and not to fight? When I start sending her to the left or to the right, the early stages of these hand signals are very important. So now we're going to push Manny this way to the right. Notice she's not fighting at this point. I've got her in full Nelson with her body, so she can't fight with her body. She loves it. She's relaxing. She learns that if she gives in the pressure, that life is good. If she doesn't give in the pressure, I fight with her. So here's this direction. Now we go this direction. She, she's a little bit ornery, but this is a, it's like an exercise, almost like yoga for a dog. Once you do this and you tell them you're a good dog, good dog, then you go the other way. Good dog, good dog. We do this almost daily. This should be done probably the first 90 days of a dog's life, almost every day. Some dogs take 180 days. And again, left, right, still. Then I point her head up, point her head down. She fights a little, I tell her, good dog. Now she's relaxed. She's relaxed in this position. Now, this is a critical thing. For a dog to accept you as their leader or as you to be the alpha or the pack leader of a pack of dogs, wolves, when they play and they roll around, if you ever notice, the wolf on top always has the bottom wolf flipped over with their neck exposed and their heart and their chest exposed. That's nature's way of saying, I give. When a pack leader wolf takes the other wolf and flips him over and gets the jugular vein exposed and the heart and lungs exposed, then that dog says, yes, you're the alpha leader. I will obey what your command is. It's very critical for dogs to also do the same thing that's been millions and millions of years in their psyche. Their brain is wired for millions of years as a pack, like a pack of wolves. And if you're the top wolf, they'll always agree with you. If they think they're the top wolf, it'll be a fight and a struggle every day. So maybe once a day, once a week, you should assert the fact that you are the alpha leader and I'm going to roll Manny over here to show that she is not the boss that we are. And then once she relaxes and gives in to the fact that she's not the alpha, then we pet her and we love her. Good girl. So now we're going to flip her over, just like in wrestling, being careful not to hurt her. And we want her on the ground. Okay. Just like wrestling move with kids. And you want to turn her on a complete back, which is completely, which is completely uh, against nature for her. So you got her completely on her back, and you've got her jugular vein exposed and her heart exposed. And when you do that, good girl, good girl, good girl, good dog. And if she's kicking or fighting, you've got to stop them from that. But as you can tell, now she's completely flexible to left, right, in, out. Good dog, good dog, good dog. This is a critical part of dog training. If you don't ever establish if you're the boss or they're the boss, every day they'll test you. 
So you can see her heart's exposed, her lungs are exposed. That's not not something that they do until they want to give in to the pack leader. Good dog, good dog, good dog, good girl. And then you want to be nice to them. Good, 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 good. But you also want to do this flexing with the feet and the head. And you can see where she's like, okay, okay, we're gonna we're gonna cooperate, we're gonna have a good time, we're not gonna be fighting. If she fights, you notice from my knees, I squeeze the air out of her and I push on her until she relaxes. Now she's relaxed. Good dog. Good dog, good dog, good dog. This is a move and a, a, a critical training technique that every dog should have. Notice I stick my finger in her mouth also. So that if she was to bite me, I would have her. See how my thumb is? And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't want them to bite or anything like that, but I also give them the opportunity. You know, that might be hard on your fingers, but mine are pretty tough. Good, 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 good. I do that so that they know that they're completely, I'm the complete alpha dog, and they're under control. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to discuss another dog handling technique. Very important with pit bulls and more vicious dogs, not so important with Labradors. The technique we're going to do is how to handle a dog's head without getting bit, where the dog kind of bites themselves. So when I grab a dog, I grab them in a very distinct way if you get a wild one or a crazy one. We're going to zoom in here and take a look at this. When I grab a dog's mouth, I always push the skin into their mouth. Do you see where my thumb is there? When they bite, they're biting their own self. They can bite through the skin and crunch the knuckle off of my thumb, which has happened before. But most dogs, when you shove the skin into their mouth and you get your other finger into this part of their mouth, they quit biting. This is a way when a dog has a temper tantrum or they're vicious, if you get them in this manner, sometimes they'll bust the knuckle off your thumb or the fingernail, but most generally they'll give up. You'll get a hard case once in a while that you might have to get a little harder on, but this is also if they start the whining, the vocalizing, the biting, this is a way to stop that. So if you ever have one fighting on a bird or wanting to chew, if you put your finger between their skin and their tooth, they'll quit biting, especially if you do both sides. So that's a technique for dog handling that you should use sparingly if they're chewing stuff up around the house. It's a good technique to have. And then you just let off on it. Manny doesn't hurt her cheeks at all. If you look inside there, she hasn't hurt herself at all. That's a good thing. 90%, 99% of all dogs will quit biting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to discuss another very important training technique that I use. I've done this for 30 years. My grandpa had done it for 100 before me. My dad did it. One of the, the techniques that I like to use is when I call a dog in, I like them in the pocket, we call this. The pocket is a safety zone for the dog to be in. It's in between my legs and where I've got him almost in a wrestling half for full Nelson. The reason I like this position is when a dog has a bird or a dummy in their mouth and I go to reach for it, they have nowhere to go but back or next to me. They can't back up because they already are in the garage backwards. So I call this the garage or the pocket. If the dog wants to fight, let's say they've got a porcupine quill stuck in their eye. One, I don't know if you can see, but I have, if you do a close-up, I've got the dog between my legs so I can squeeze the air out of them. I've got their head and their body in position so that they automatically refer to the second or the third alpha. I become the alpha wolf, they become the, the lesser wolf. And in that position, I can check all injuries, I can check all vital signs, hug my dog, love on my dog, check their mouth for wounds, check their eyes, and they can't back up or pull off to the side. If there was a fishing hook stuck in her eye and she was running around and I was over there following, it would be very difficult. Now if there's a fishing hook stuck in her eye and I've got her in a full Nelson, we can operate from this position. And it also gives a dog a safety zone in which to go in, and they like to play too. Yeah, good dog, man. Good dog, good dog. Okay, Manny's doing extremely well. She's had a long session. We're going to let her go here in a minute. 